remember the day we were we were praying at Cherry Lane and there were three of you and Spur. and Deb Eisenhart came up and said if you need prayer and she sent you down. That was the first day we met. It was amazing, wasn't it? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Well, when I first uh, started coming to Terry Lane, um, I'd almost lost all faith in the Lord until I met you and Ryan and a few other people that were praying for me. I was going through some really hard times and especially after losing my wife. I was going through a hard time and um, I finally met up with you and Ryan and Lindsay and whoever else and you know, this, we all started changing my life around a lot. You know what, I, I came, I got baptized at Tree right about like three years ago. I'm at peace and um, you know, I have a family um, in Christ, I would have to say. Um, Ryan, you know, me and Ryan used to come here uh, to the market to, you know, eat, eat breakfast every, every Saturday. Um, and um, and at, at Cherry Lane, always had good conversations, you know, um, with everybody, with everybody here. Um, so, like, like I said, you know, from the beginning, you know, just um, a family, a family in Christ. So the one day the Lord said to me, he said, Ryan, the gospel is not a gospel of pity. He said, the gospel is a gospel of honor. And when he said this to me was when uh, I was driving home from the street event that we had this past summer down at Cherry Lane in September. And I said, why do you say that? He said, because I'm the king of kings and lord of lords. And he said, who, he said, who are the kings that I'm the king of? And he said, all of you. So do you guys know that? You heard Lisa say, you know, that um, I was a drug addict. And um, I met Jesus when I was in jail uh, at York County Prison. And one of the things I, I found out was a lot of the things that I thought about myself, God didn't think about me. And a lot of times when we think things about ourselves that are different than what God thinks about us, that, those are, that, that kind of thinking keeps us stuck in the mess. How has Tuesday night to Cherry Lane impacted your life, Marshall? Um, it gave me a place to go. It gave me a meal. But then it turned into more than that. It turned into, it gave me a place to find new friends. And that really started my journey to uh, coming to where I'm at now with my walking with Christ. Uh, they loved me when I couldn't love myself. Uh, there was always a smile there for me. When I was at my worst, they seen me. And uh, yeah, it was just the starting date for me. Man, they loved you. Yeah, they definitely loved me. Thank you. For Marshall, we thank you for moving upon his heart to receive your son Jesus as his Lord and Savior. We thank you for the open door of Pennsylvania Adult Team Challenge. We pray, Father, that you would be with him every step of the way and that you would assure him of that. But right now, we baptize him in the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit. I was one way when I left New York. And in a matter of months, God turned me into something else. And I'm going to tell you, it's not easy. But what I do know, it's worth it. Amen.
Amen. The power of Jesus Christ. I am a new person. Amen. Amen. That's I like Mr. Ryan and Lisa as my father and my mother. Because growing up, I didn't really have that. I didn't know actually at the, at the time how to fully have love or around me. I just wanted to say again, thanks to all of y'all, the ones that helped me do anything in life. If it wasn't for you, I'd be outside, sleeping on the street. I was out there, I know how it feels. So to me, it does hurt to see people to this day still sleeping on the streets. You know, John 3.16 talks about, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And John 17 says that, you know, he sent his Son not into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world so that the whole world might be saved through him. And so to me, that speaks to the heart of the Father. The heart of the Father was in that place. It was in the center of the city. It was in the heart of the city. And that was what was revealed to me at the very beginning of Cherry Lane. So, and through that, I think, you know, it spoke a lot about um, love and, you know, God's love and what kind of love God has and how powerful that is and how much he loves each and every one of us, um, regardless of where we are, what we did, where we came from. Um, his love is unconditional. It's eternal. It's forever. And, um, you know, he sent his son to save each and every one of us. Like, I don't know, when I think about that, it's like, wow. What's encouraging to me is that there are a number of guys who have thanked us collectively for being here on Tuesday nights, just for the fact that it's a safe place to come. They can get a, a meal, they can be prayed over, and it's just encouraging. They Even if they don't come on Tuesday, they know that we're gonna be here, and that, that they can come and be encouraged. We always say, that could be us. And Tina would say, yeah, one, pay, one paycheck away yeah. from being on the streets. So it really um, helped me to, helps me to honor anybody, honor, not to think that they're just poor people that, are, that don't take a bath and are drunk all the time or, or whatever. You know, they're broken people who need help and it changed my life. I talk to more strangers now than I ever did because of the whole encounter on Cherry Lane. The last four years have changed my life definitively and Permanently, um, I think one of the biggest things is that it's redefined um, who my neighbor is and what love looks like. Um, I don't feel like there's uh, there's words really adequate words to describe um, to fully lay out um, what has happened over the last four years and what it's meant just to be in relationship. Um, but it's blessed me immeasurably, and I'm very, very, very grateful. Yeah. What do you think it would mean for people if we were able to have a building, like an inside place, and be able to meet with people more than just one day a week? Oh, that would be perfect. I would love it. Yeah. More people out here would love it in York. That would be a blessing. What happens when we're down at Cherry Lane? <laughs> we have a good time, laughing, joking, and eating. Prayer. Prayer. That's the first thing, prayer. Yeah. Then after that, everything comes right into place.
and just loving each other. Oh, yes, where ma'am. We're, where we're at. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah. When we did have a place to go at night um, for, for the meals, people would stay, people would sit and talk, and relationships were just so much easier to establish. Um, I think if we had a place, I mean, you, we could have Bible studies, people could come, and I mean, I would love to give art lessons to, or just have a place where people could come and draw or paint um, as a way of expression. Um, I, I, I think it'd be a place that they could come out of the cold. I mean, I think a lot of times people don't come on Tuesday nights, especially in the winter. It's just, sometimes it's, you know, raining or it's just so cold um, that people don't come. And that's sad because, you know, we're there, um, but it would be great to have a place where people can come and know that they can just stay um, and we could meet, I just think we could meet their needs better. Yeah, and they, they'll stay longer too. Mm -hmm. when, when we had when we had a room, um, a nice big room, uh, they uh, we, we all ate together meals around a large table, and and uh, and it was in the freezing cold winter time, and and uh, and so it was just a great time of refuge for them to get away from the cold. And God uses either way, but. Um, It'd be great to have a, a building. If we had one available all the time, I don't think for a minute that people wouldn't be there taking advantage of it, um, wanting to have a place they could go and talk, get prayed for, eat, whatever it is. I think it would be amazing, and we are praying diligently for that. If we're going to be able to disciple people, then we, I think we have to have a permanent place to be able to teach, to preach, um, to give them life skills, to be able to just be a part of their life on an everyday basis. And I know that isn't individually, but it's collectively as a group where we can share in that, um, to bring them out of the cold, out of the elements, and uh, that they can just uh, see and hear Jesus Christ and how he would work in their life. And if there was a place that you had, um, and you had room, you could put those that are on the street up and give them a, a job in there to help caretakers or yeah. whatever. So it, it'd be a big impact on their lives, I think, and ours. Yeah. Because you know, we could be there, you know, helping. It would give hope to the city. Part of Ryan's testimony is that when he <coughs> lived on the streets, because he used to live in the crack houses and he was homeless, that there were no Christians out there and no one told him that God loved him. So our heart and motivation is for people who God brings um, in contact with us and in a relationship with us is for them to know that they're loved and they're valued and that they have purpose. So um, we believe that a vision is something that God tells a person uh, this is what he wants to do, or this is what he's going to do. And when he shares that with that person, it's an invitation for that person to join him. So when, when we say share our vision, it's not something that we're going to do or try to make happen. It's something that we believe that he wants to do in the city of York, and we get to join him. And he's just looking for people, not just people from certain denominations or certain churches or certain ministries, but just people who just want to follow him, who just want to obey him and love him in that way and love people. And we believe that's all he's looking for. So our vision is for uh, the generally marginalized in York City to become a light in the midst of a dark world and for York to be a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. And our mission, now this is the part that we do, and our mission is to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the streets, to transform the belief system in our communities to where the love and power of God is normal, to bring a message of hope to those that have none. Now 
I give that helping hand to a humble man and watch him stand rebuilding his dreams in everything in everything in everything a man's building his dream in everything in everything